for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hands of the enemy. What do you say? Amen. You are not here by chance, do you hear me? I truly believe you are here by divine appointment. You are here because God wanted you here today. Amen. And it is my prayer that as you hear the message that I have for you today, you will be blessed. Amen. This past week, as I was up in Northern California planning for the Union Camporee, which is going to be held next October, the Holy Spirit was at my side. Last night, as I reviewed what I was going to say here today, the Holy Spirit was at my side. But Lord and behold, when I jumped in my automobile to come here to the promised lands of Arlington, I could tell the Holy Spirit had beaten me here already. Because <laughs> I got here and so many friendly welcomes, I just really appreciate. You know, when you go to different churches every weekend, or you're doing different activities. We've been all over the place here lately. It's nice to come to a friendly church and to be greeted with love and just a, a nice welcome. So thank you for that. I uh, just want to share with you on behalf of the Pathfinders that are here, our Pathfinder poem. So lend me your ears and follow me closely. Welcome to our Pathfinder day. We're glad to have you here. We've come to share our pleasures with those we hold so dear. Our club is here in uniform with counselors and staff, and you guys are looking good. They share with us their wisdom in nature, skills, and crafts. We learn to march together we like to keep in step. Our church will have our best because we are filled with pep. The church needs every boy and girl, and we are here to say we want our lives to shine for Christ and point men to God's way. Again, we give you welcome to this, our Pathfinder Day, to call you all to worship and for each member pray. Let us bow our heads as we approach the throne of grace. Father in heaven, we come before you this morning to give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, we look different. We have come from different parts of Riverside. We all have different needs. But there is one thing that we all have in common here today in this very place. We have come in search of your blessing. And Father, we lift our hands as Jacob did long ago to say, we will not let you go until you bless us here. So, Father, as our thirsty souls approach your fountain of living water, help us to drink and help our souls to be satisfied. And when we leave here today, we can truly say we've had an encounter with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm glad to be here with you in uniform today. I've gotten a little heavy through the years. Matter of fact, I've been on Utra system for the last seven weeks. And I barely got my uniform on today. I'm afraid that if I was to unzip this thing, it'd be kind of an ugly mess up here. But at least I'm in it. Uncomfortable, but I'm in it. Amen. I have a poem I want to share with you. I'm in the poems, all right? Now, I'm a long-winded Hispanic preacher, so, you know, the Lord be with you. But the, 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 the poem is called The Grandest Picture. And I mean it with all my heart. And this is for you, Pathfinders. Listen to me. The grandest picture I behold is not the setting sun, though he robes himself in scarlet when his daily race is won. Tis not the lofty mounds nor the tall and stately trees. Yes, my eyes delight in thee. Tis not the gorgeous flowers nor the birds that cleave the air, though in thee I see reflected heavenly wisdom, love, and care. The grandest picture I behold are consecrated youth, our noble Christian boys and girls established in the truth. To watch and view their powers unfold, this is the grandest picture my human eyes behold. We love you, Pathfinders. And I want to tell you this morning, God loves each one of you. And as I look at you, I see you with a capital P, with a lot of potential. And God needs you. This church needs you. And I say here today, they are not the future of the church. I say they're the now of the church. If you were to close your eyes and imagine not a young person in this sanctuary, it would be a sad place. And I'm so glad that our pathfinders are active and participating. 
Because I want to share with you where it all began. And I'm going to ask my pathfinders to kind of help me out a little. I'm going to walk on down here in the front. And I'm going to get some posters here. And Brother Gonzalez and Brother Daryl, I want to thank you for your ministry. And I want to ask you if you guys can help me with this. And uh, I'm going to give you a choice of a 45-minute sermon or a half hour. So I want to know which one do you want. Let's see a show of hands of 45 minutes. <laughs> How about a half hour? Uh, it's a tie, man. It's a tie. It's a tie. But if I can have four Pathfinders up here in the front, we're going to have some fun. And we're going to uh, uh, share with you of how it all began, youth ministries in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And how God has carried us to today. And I want you to see how he has blessed us. So come on, Pathfinders. Don't be bashful. Here's one for you. One for you. We're going to have fun, aren't we? One for you. <laughs> and one for you. All righty? And history goes that uh, Brother James White was out there. And if you read the history, you can follow up on it and kind of check my, my history background. But we are told that Brother James White was walking one day back in New Hampshire, up in that area, just thinking what he could do for our young people in the church. There was all kinds of activities for the adults, but there was nothing for our young people. And I believe under God's inspiration, he wrote the first youth instructor in 1852. How many of you old timers remember the youth instructor? Let me see your hands. Come on, raise them high. Those are some antiques you guys are looking at there. <laughs> Woo, there's some antiques. 1852. The youth instructor was developed for our young people in the church to keep them in the church. Now, I want you to lend me yours. I want you to see how God started it and how he has led us through all these years. And you're going to see how God has blessed us. In 1879, we had the youth instructor, Ferner, Ferner and Warren, develop. The Youth Society. Remember the old MV Society? Remember that? Well, they developed it in 1879. Then in 1907, M.E. Kern at Mount Vernon, Ohio, came up with the name Missionary Volunteers. It was the Youth, Youth Society. Then it became Missionary Volunteers. Do you guys remember the old MV? You remember it, right? Yeah. All those old timers out there? Yeah. 1907. And today... There's the eternal flame that burns that was established back to 1907 to remember youth ministries within the church. It is still burning today in Mount Vernon, Ohio, 1907. In 1909, JMV Society began in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thank you, guys. If you can sit down, I'm going to have four others. Can I have four other Pathfinders? Yeah, if we can get those. And I want you to know that these posters were developed by John Hancock himself. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about John Hancock. Do you guys remember who John Hancock was? He started Pathfinder Ministries in the Seventh-day Adventist Church 70 years ago. So I want to just share with you here. This is number five for you. Six, seven, and eight. <laughs> here we go. So we have... In 1919, the Mission Scouts, A.W. Spaulding. Now, he has started the Mission Scouts, but he was told by the members of the church, ah, you're bringing the world into the church, so we're not really interested in doing this. So the idea of Mission Scouts in 1919 passed into the annals of history. 1919. But the idea, the seed was planted in 1919. And then in 1922, Harriet Holt, a woman in ministry back in the, the, the general conference saw, thought to herself, you know, we need to have something in our schools for our children. We didn't have Pathfinders yet. Uh, we had MV Society. But she came up with the idea of starting the Pathfinder uh, uh, that came to be known as the Pathfinder Honors or Classwork, the friend, companion, and up to master guide that we have today. That started in 1922. And then in 1928, we had C. Lester Bond that started the Master Comrade and the honors that are used in the church today. I just want to know, do we have any Master Comrades here today that were invested as a Master Comrade? We do. Can you please stand? Please. Is that the same as Master Guide? Yes, the same as Master Guide, but it was back. It was called Master Comrade. <laughs> we have various. Woo, that is awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are history. 
in the Seventh Avenue Church. Pathfinders, you need to talk to them. That started in 1928. That is awesome. Now, we're known today as Master Guides. That changed during World War II because of the communism, uh, you know, comrade. So they changed it to Master Guide. That's why it changed over and just wanted to let you know that. And then in 1929, 1930, the JMV Pathfinder Camp, we had, uh, now we had uh, uh, youth uh, uh, activities going on at the local church. We had material that was being developed. And the idea came, why don't we go up and have, in Camp Idlewild, a camp for the kids. So it started. It was such a success. In 1929 and 30, parents started asking the conference office, well, why don't we have this every single su summer? So we purchased the camp up in Idlewild. It was 15 acres. We purchased it and began summer camp activities for youth in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. In 1930, they said, well, what are we going to call this camp? The name Pathfinders was born. It was called JMV Pathfinder Camp in 1930 in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and it went to the world field. Thank you so much, guys. Let me collect these real quick. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. <laughs> Hold those applause. There you go. <laughs> now we have nine. Any others? Any takers here? Any takers? Come on, guys. Just double time. These parents are getting upset here. <laughs> they want to go home and eat. Yeah, that's yours. This is yours. And that's yours. Thank you so much. Then in the 30s, we had Dr. Johnson and McKim, who was a Boy Scout leader that had known about the, uh, uh, the Scouts, Mission Scouts, in 1919. He had heard about it. When in Santa Ana, which is now known as Santa Ana Broadway Church, they started a, a group of young people meeting, the boys upstairs, the girls downstairs, and it began. But once again, the church members came and said, you're bringing the world into the church. Disband or you will be disfellowshipped. And being obedient individuals as they were, they disband the group. But the seed, once again, was planted. In 1930 to 1963, God lifted up L.A. Skinner. Did any of you ever have the privilege of meeting him? L.A. Skinner. Some, remember, brother and sister there? L.A. Skinner, huh? You work for him. Well, you are an antique. <laughs> but we love you. I'm not too far behind you, sister. But uh, he, uh, he started the... Uh, uh, in 1930, up in the North Pacific Union, the trailblazers, the seed had been planted, and we had a man now that was at the uh, conference level, and then went on to the division. So I want you to see how God lifted up these individuals and how he placed them in places that God was going to be able to use to establish youth ministries in the church. Skinner in 1930, 1963. Then in 1946, John Hancock developed the Pathfinder program right here in Southeastern California Conference. We had the Mission Scouts. We had uh, um, the, the Scouts at McKim and Johnson that started, but they had disbanded. And then we had Skinner at the conference and then at the division who had the idea of wanting to do the same thing with the Trailblazers. And then God lifted up John Hancock in 1946. And not far from here, he started the first Pathfinder Club in the Seventh-day Adventist Church with the name Pathfinders. And then in 1947 and 1950 at the Union. Now we have John Hancock at the conference. We have Nelson at the Union. We have Skinner at the division. And the uh, uh, Pathfinders began to spread throughout the world. Thank you so much. Now we have the others. There we go. I'll collect those real quick. That's okay. I'll put them back in order. And it just gets better as it goes. <laughs> I think it does anyway. <laughs> All right. There you go. How's that? No, my name ain't on there, man. I ain't that old. <laughs> now, how many remember Brother Berg, Henry Berg, who was a youth director? Remember Henry Berg? Yes, he's the one that wrote. There's individuals in here that remember him. He wrote the Pathfinder song. I had the opportunity of actually talking to him. I had the opportunity of seeing the piece of paper that he wrote the Pathfinder song on. He was not a musician. His wife played the piano, but he was commissioned to write the Pathfinder song. 
And he told me from uh, San Jose, where the uh, uh, conference office was, he was traveling on a Sabbath morning to Monterey for a Pathfinder day. And the word started coming to him. Oh, we are the Pathfinder strong. The servants of God are we. I get emotional because he pulled over and he began to write the words to the Pathfinder song. Amen. He got home after the Sabbath was over and shared with his wife who played the piano. And they started the Pathfinder song, the music that went with it. Well, you know, not knowing a lot about music, even though she played the piano, they sent it to a, a musician that wrote music. And he told them, I wouldn't change a thing. And the Pathfinder song was born. Now, do you think it was God uh, uh, divine? Do you think it was ordered by God? And I want you to listen to the words. Oh, we are the Pathfinder strong. The servants of God are we. Faithful as we march along in truth and purity. A message to tell to the world. A message that will set you free. King Jesus the Savior is coming back for you and me. Isn't that our message? Isn't that our message? Or we are the Pathfinder strong. And then we had Paulson. Brother Paulson was a, a layman who started Pathfinder clubs in southeastern California and in southern California that would number up to three to 400 kids in one Pathfinder club alone. Uh, he was an awesome uh, a layman who was very much involved in youth ministries in the church. Then we had Palmer who developed a lot of the nature honors. We had Smith who developed the drill in the Pathfinder program today. Just men and women that were used by God to start the program. And in 1950, it went to the World Church. And I'm here to tell you today we're over a million strong Pathfinders in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Amen? Amen. And then in 1951, the Pathfinder Fair started right here in Southeastern. Everything started here in Southeastern. This is where it all began. And from here it went to the World Church in 1951. Then we had Martin was a, a youth director also, very much involved in establishing the program. We had Henry uh, Garlic. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he served, he served in Normandy. And uh, man, he made it back, and he was one of the youth directors uh, here for the Pacific Union, also went on to the Union, but he helped develop the youth ministry program here in our church. And then in 1954, we had our very first worldwide camporee. Now it's history, man. Everybody has camperies. And I'll share a little more with you about that. And that was in Idlewild in 1954. And then in 1962, we purchased Pine Springs Ranch that you guys know today. And, of course, it is called uh, a retreat center now. But in uh, 1985, we had our first uh, North American Division campery in Camp Hale. Were any of you there at Camp Hale? So, yeah. That, to me, that was the granddaddy of all of them. 1985, Camp Hale. And back then, I think we numbered somewhere like six to 7,000. Today at Oshkosh, Wisconsin, we now number 50,000 Pathfinders at that camporee. But it all started back in 1954. And from then, every five years, we have division-wide camporees. The very first South American division camporee was in Fawzi, Iwasu, Brazil in 1982. But the one that started the whole trend going was a Mexican union out of Mexico that started the very first division-wide camporee, and from there it went to the World Church. Just really exciting. All right, let's get the others. We're going to finish up here shortly. I'll take those. There you go. Which one is this? Let me see. Yeah, I think they go like that. There you go. There you go. One for you, one for you, and one for you. Lift them up high. Be proud. <laughs> All right. And in 1994, we had uh, uh, the campery in uh, Red Rock, Colorado. Every five years, we were having camperies for the division. And then in 1996, right here in La Sierra at the Pavilion Center, anybody that was anybody in Pathfinder ministry, starting from all the leaders from the, uh, the general conference, the division, uh, we had John Hancock there, Skinner, uh, Paulson, all of the pioneers, and some of the very first Pathfinder children that were in the very first club in 1946. And we celebrated our 50th Golden Jubilee right here in Southeastern California Conference. And of course, uh, it is now 70 years that Pathfinder ministry is growing very strong. What God has done in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Then the idea came up, Tony Anobli, who was now who was the president 
at the uh, uh, Arizona conference. Now he's VP at the union. Well, he was a youth director in the Southern California conference. Well, he called me and he says, you know, Rudy, what do you think if you were to have a float in the, tur in, in the Tournament of Roses parade? And I said, you know, that sounds great, man, but that's a whole lot of money. How would we, how would we lift that? How would we raise that money? And uh, how would we even get involved in it? Only 60 cars are chosen for the Rose Parade. I said, well, I, I don't know. You know, Lord, I believe, help thou in my unbelief. But Tony says, I'm going to call Norm Middag, and I'm going to plant the seed. The seed was planted. And the young people of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and their parents raised well over $250,000. And we had the very first Tournament of Roses Parade in, the very, in 1991. We not only participated, we had a trophy. In 1992, we won the President's Trophy. And in 1993, uh, we uh, again won the President Trophy. And any of you ever work on that float back, dating back to 91, 92? We have some individuals that were there. That's awesome. Yeah, we were there, friends, weren't we? All those cold nights decorating that float. But the Lord blessed. You know, not long after this, I had the opportunity of going to Russia with a bunch of teens uh, to start a, a church in, in, a, in, a, in a dark area. There was no church. We raised the money uh, to uh, hire a pastor for one year. We had evangelistic meetings. I forget how many we baptized, but we baptized quite a few. And I remember uh, walking down and handing out handbills uh, in St. Petersburg. And uh, there was a, a man that saw us, and he saw the name Seventh-day Adventist. And he says, you know, I saw you guys on TV. They're turning on the Roses Parade. I had a translator with me because I didn't understand anything he was saying. But it was interesting to see he has seen us on TV. Millions of individuals had witnessed and seen the name Seventh-day Adventist on our Turn on the Roses Parade, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ and letting them know who we are. And then, of course, in, in 1999, uh, uh, we had Oshkosh Campery again, and uh, it was an overwhelming success. Now we have Oshkosh every five years, like I said, and we're numbering close to about 50,000 Pathfinders uh, in, in our division. So I want to thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. So I just want to ask you guys, has God led youth ministries in the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Amen, I want to tell you that he certainly has. And uh, I am blessed to be able to be the representative here in Southeastern California Conference for the Pathfinder program. You know, I served in the 101st Airborne in, uh, in Vietnam, and I was glad to wear my uniform. But I'm here to, to tell you this morning that I've worn this uniform for 40 years. I wore that uniform two years. I'm glad to be part of God's army and to be part of, a, of an army of youth that are going to help finish this work. And I just want to thank Brother Daryl and Brother Gonzalez and all the other leaders that are here for your, your, your leadership in Pathfinder ministry. It truly makes a difference. You know, I go all over our conference. I go to all different type of activities in the division. And I don't think there's a time I ever go to one of these, Pastor Lundgren, that I don't have a young person that comes up and tells me, Pastor Rudy, I was a Pathfinder of yours. And you know, now they're, you know, they're Truck drivers, they're dentists, they're doctors, they're lawyers. Matter of fact, we were at Kite Day in San Diego. And uh, I was out there announcing, and everybody seems to recognize my voice. Well, this doctor was from Oceanside, and he was at a doctor's convention. He took a break, walked outside, and he could hear my voice over the sound system. And he said, man, I recognize that voice. That's Pastor Rudy. He actually got in his car, drove to where we were, found me, and said, Pastor Rudy, I don't think you remember me. He told me his name. He said, but I was a pathfinder. And I walked out to take a break, and I heard your voice, and it brought back so many beautiful memories. You know, Pathfinders is making a difference in our church. Oh, does it have all the answers? No, it doesn't. But I'm here to tell you it's helping to develop our young people to be faithful members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And I want to thank you for your support. Pastor Lundgren, thank you for your support. Thank you for inviting me to be here today. And I'm glad to have had that opportunity to be here. It took a long time to do it, but we worked it out. So I just want to thank you so much. I would ask that you continue to support our young people, to support our youth here in this church. Let us bow our heads as we approach the throne of grace. Let us pray together. And I'm going to finish up with the words 
directly out of, of the Bible, out of 2 Corinthians. And this is our closing prayer. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.